So, once again, thanks for greeting us. We're happy to be here. Um, I think uh, one or two of us are actually going to speak about foreclosure specifically. I know that Arizona has been dealing with a lot of foreclosures, more so than many other states. Right. So our heart goes out to you. You know, this is not okay. You know? So, uh, okay. once again, thanks. We're happy to be here. And uh, let's fight the good fight. have to respond to them. We don't have to leave our house. We don't need to go to a court case or anything like that. But if they beat us and if they carry us off our property, then we can press charges for not just assault, but countersuit over their fraudulent foreclosures. So occupying your homes is absolutely a great method of stopping this illegal foreclosure epidemic. Um, but we do need to look at what, what caused it and, and that I think is going to really stop it from happening again. And in my opinion, I think the reason why we're here is for so many diverse minds and we all need to learn from each other and see it from different perspectives so we can see the truth, you know, and, and we can see where everything overlaps. But from my perspective, it looks like the big problem was um, this this uh, this housing stimulus where, you know, they, they didn't print money to give to us so that we can buy houses. They printed money to give to the big banks so that it can trickle down so that we can buy houses. And everyone knows that doesn't work. So, um, not only does that is that completely, um, you know, economically unstable from the get-go. Uh, the banks that we gave those bailouts or the stimulus to are known to practice fraud and are known to, to gamble wildly in, der in derivative markets. These are not the banks to give those stimulus to those billions of dollars, which actually inflated the currency and cost us, you know, our 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 uh, price of living. Everything goes up. We don't have that money. The banks got that money. You know. So uh, and then, you know, of course, the houses were for affordable because the banks got the stimulus and subsidized things are cheap. But um, then they turned it on us, and uh, that was completely fraudulent, illegal. But we have to look at conscious consumerism and be able to say, you know what? I'm not going to put my money in Bank of America. I'm not going to take a loan from Wells Fargo. I'm going to actually promote a boycott of these five banks, you know. Um, let me tell you guys who the enemy is right now. It's U.S. Bank, it's Wells Fargo, it's Bank of America, it's Chase, and um, someone help me with the third one, Citigroup. So uh, these five banks have done plenty of fraudulent things. There are plenty of local banks to go to, um, you know, and credit unions. And I, I would say to look to your community, you know, for grants, not loans, you know. Um, but, but really, I think I, we should focus on conscious consumerism. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, right on. Okay, so first off, my name is Ashley. I'm here with the Occupy Caravan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What that does 
this, it basically gives the bank the right to dictate the rate and the pricing at which they're going to increase your your uh, mortgage in California based on you know your credit and how much the house is. However, that's wrong because the bank basically gets to set it at whatever they want. However, my mom didn't know that, and um, we didn't have our house for two years, and uh, our mortgage went from fifteen hundred dollars to eighteen hundred to thirty-five hundred. They went from the eighteen hundred to thirty-five hundred within six months. She couldn't pay it, so we got our house foreclosed. Because of that, my mom um, actually ended up getting her real estate license. She, um, you know, read into everything that the lenders were doing, everything that the banks were doing. Um, she has this conspiracy theory that um, about the banks, about you know how they knew it was coming, and I completely, 100% agree with her. Um, you know, I basically, in layman's terms, I think the idea was banks get you, you know, get people these homes that we can't afford just to take them back, and it's wrong. So, my mom became a real estate agent, and every single time she sold a house, she explains everything, and that's what they didn't do with her. She likes to explain, you know, the adjustment rate mortgages aren't the best for you. They can, you know, really jack up your price in your home, and they can even take your home away because once they do that, it devalues your home. So you're basically paying for a home that isn't worth what you're paying for. So what I want to say to everybody here is that Buying a home is a really big investment. It's, you know, a life investment. And uh, I just want to stress that it's really important to look into what you're, what you're getting into. And having um, a mother that, you know, had that happen to her right now, every single time she has a client, she explains everything. I, I've seen her at, do what she does, and it's amazing. And it's, it sucks that, you know, some real estate agents don't do that, however, Having my mom do that, at least I know that somebody's doing it right. And what I want to send the message out to you guys is just, you know, you could be caught up in that cloud of excitement because you're buying a new home and it's so exciting because you're starting a new life in a new place, but don't let that overlook your common sense. Always know what you're getting into, and always know that you're getting into it with the right type of Um, specifically to Arizona, I don't, we don't have a catchy chance for Wells Fargo, but they're just as bad as all the other ones that rhyme. Um, specifically here, was it a hundred million dollars for the uh, attorney generals that Arizona got? And 50 million our governor took and is going into the general fund now, some of which could support anything from her own private militia to private prisons. Wells Fargo is one of the largest investors of that, so these four closed homes are connected to all of that. And so, we built a couple of lovely foreclosed well, homes here. If our homes want to come together here right up front. Um, and what we want to do here is tie this into the national problem. Um, Arizona is one of the hardest hit states, but right now there's 16 million home owners who are underwater. I don't know how many million vacant homes. And so the way we see it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we got some pretty evil people going around, going into our communities, into our neighborhoods, 
taking our homes, our lives, our neighbors illegally. So they just come through and they just kick down our houses. Fall down, Charlie, please. They, they, they break through our garage doors like Lily Washington's house and punch us in the face. And then they just, you know, tear apart our neighborhoods and all this shit just comes down. I've seen countless neighbors who grew up with people all around their house in North Phoenix, in West Phoenix, who don't know any of their neighbors anymore. It is decentralizing our communities. We have a community right here of people. They come in, start picking people off, removing families. It makes the fight against the 99% that much easier. So if you're not being foreclosed on, if your family's not being foreclosed on, you're sure as shit your neighbor, your neighbor's brother, your neighbor's sister has been foreclosed on. With over 16 million homes underwater, this is not the fault of the 99%. But this right here is from those banks on top, from Fannie Mae, from Freddie Mac to Bank of America, that have left our communities like this. So, where are we going next? Bank of America! 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 Bank of
And you know, don't think that just because this is Phoenix, this is any less important than New York City or California or Los Angeles. So keep doing what you guys do and work harder. And uh, thank you for having us so much. Washington is going to speak. You thank you, Lozzie. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I want to talk for people who is in uh, foreclosure and who was on the street. I was in foreclosure. Uh, I was in loan modification. I mean, uh, before I lived my son, uh, I received a phone call from U.S. Army. They said my son was hurt in the Afghanistan, and uh, I uh, let the bank know, hey, I'm on a loan modification with Bank of America. And right now I have to leave to my son in Afghanistan. He was uh, hurt and right now he's in the hospital, US Army hospital. And I leave to him. They said, okay, you can go to your son. When you come back, we finish loan, pro loan modification process. When I come back, I found my house was empty complete, signed for sale in front of my house. And they take everything and send to city dam. I said, why you said send to city dam without any notice, without any eviction order? Why you send all my life and my son life? My son fighting for this country. My son fighting for keep the pace in your heart and your home and your, this country. They said, well, we're sorry we do mistake, but we will have to pay for that. How much you pay? $2,500 for all my life and my son's life. You're talking and putting the city down. Why you pay $2,500? You give me more money to recover everything, furniture, everything what my son. He have purple heart medal for that. They talk and put in garbage, everything. And one man from Chandler, his name is Perdue, uh, he was a, a veteran, he gave me that purple heart medal like honoring my son. Because they talk and put in garbage everything. So everybody have to fighting for that. Don't go on the street. I go back in my home right now, I'm still living in my home because I go to fighting with them to the court, court of appeal. Uh, after that they evicted me, I, evic I appealed that uh, eviction. And I'm fighting them to superior court right now. I'm to federal court with them, but I no leave my house. I don't go on the street. I don't want to be homeless. Right, really. So you're fighting for that. Yeah. God bless you, everyone. You don't God need to be homeless. Bless you. Woo! Okay, yeah. So, you know, maybe I kind of fucked up a little bit. I screwed up. I'm sorry. I messed up a little bit. I threw a glass of water, and she's on yeah. the phone. She goes, he's throwing knives at me. I, I walk out my back door, I got six dots on me, and I lost my housing, and I've been hosing ever since. What am I supposed to do? See her and go. Well, hey, thanks, man. How long you been well, homeless for, man? About 10 years. Yeah. Just for helping somebody out. You see what that sign says right there? Yeah, I do. I do. What do you think about that? I think it's kind of screwed up. And you know what? I don't deserve it. I was just trying to help somebody else out with their homeless. Sure, man. What am I supposed to do? You're obviously not alone, right? No, I'm not. I'm not. And um, that's so all I got to say. So let's not stand by while banks foreclose, hey. whether it's you, whether it's Lily. Guess, guess what I got to say. All right? I can say, hey, banks, I want mine. I want mine. That's I'm the Chase got. Bank. Look, the point is, is that we got to create a society where everybody's taken care of. No more kicking people to the curb and saying, ah, heck with you. That's not okay. We got to make sure this whole planet is housed. We got to make sure everybody on earth is fed. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. We're living in such a great age. This technology, we're streaming live cameras. We've been to the moon. I mean, what next? Can we make sure everybody's fed? Is that more hard than sending somebody to the moon? I mean, give me a break, humanity. Yeah. Enough is enough. Let's take care of our people. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 My feet in. That this seems like a very spread out city, and there aren't a lot of people on the streets. So in a way, you guys have an even more challenge than LA and New York, and you need to work harder at coming reaching out to people in the city so a they bunch can hear of us. Because it's bitch. great that we have media here so people from other states can watch us, but we need to have people on the streets like these police officers right here listening to what we're saying and being knowledge, getting knowledge from what we're teaching people. That's what Occupy is about. 
What the banks have done to we? What the banks have done to we? They gamble, steal, they lie, they cheat. They gamble, steal, they lie, they cheat. They, they threw me out into the, the street. They threw me out into the street. Nice. That's a bad idea. Stay. That's a bad idea. This is what we do in New York, LA. You're not in New York in LA, brother. <laughs> Oh, we might have to win this. I have court in the morning or else I'd be willing to get arrested again. <laughs> mama, mama, can't you see? Mama, mama, can't you see? What big banks have done to win? What big banks have done to win? What big banks have done to win? Sure. All right, good evening. My name is Sergio Rodriguez. I'm 20 years old. Three years ago, I lost my house to Chase. All right, so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit how I lost my house and how it affected me. So three years ago, I was a 17-year-old you know, my mother was a janitor. As a janitor, you know, she had she worked minimum income. You know, it wasn't a lot, but it was a little bit enough for us to actually be able to try to afford to buy a house. So what ended up happening is we she ended up losing her job, and when she lost her job, we decided to go for a, a modification in within the banks. And so when everything seemed like it was going okay, all of a sudden they tell us that the house has been sold. You know, as a 17-year-old, I was going through high school. You know, I didn't, I didn't go to my prom. I didn't want to ask my parents. They didn't have money, and I understood that, so I didn't ask them. I didn't, I didn't buy my senior yearbook. To me, that meant a lot at the time. You know, and so I, I didn't, I didn't get that. But worst of all was when my parents told me that perhaps I was not going to go to college because they cannot afford it. And that, that broke my heart. You know. That's everything a student wants. Go to college, become something big to, you know, to improve on, on such a crazy place. You know, this is Arizona. But, um, but yeah, we lost our homes and, and, and at the time we didn't know how to fight back. We were scared, you know? I didn't, I didn't know people like you guys existed. I didn't know that there was a weed. I thought, I thought we were alone the whole time. So we didn't fight back. We didn't know how to fight back. We were scared. So we didn't do anything about it. We lost the house. So it's, it's been pretty tough because that, that house was that place I called home. That's, that's where I felt safe. You know, my room was in there, all my stuff. And then, you know, once you get out of there and you're forced to move every year, it's not, it's something you don't want, you know? So what I want to say is, you know, we're huge, 99%. That is a huge number. How is it that the 1% is pushing us around? You know? What are we missing? We need to unite. We need to come together. This is our fight. If we all come together as one, 99% is huge. 1% ain't got nothing. So what I say is, you know, work together, you guys. You know, this is Arizona. Yes, nobody's out here. But don't stop spreading the word, you know? We all got friends, families. We can do this together. So, you know, don't give up. I won't. I'm just asking for a little bit. And then they say, you don't have any insurance. You're gonna have to pay all of this out of pocket. Oh, wow, really? I gotta pay all this out of my own pocket. Where that's coming from? Where are you gonna get it? Fucking stone? Really? Oh, come on, really? I don't have that stone. I got a pocket. You want to see what I got in? Oh, there it is. Thank you very much. It's a magic freaking quarter. That's what I got. You want to give me that? That's going to buy me a house? Thank you very much, Obama. Okay. Banks got bailed out. We got sold out. Banks got bailed out. We got sold out.